Hello and welcome to today's live stream, still on the theme of the Youpreneur Summit, as run by Chris Ducker last week in London. And today, hi, I'm Claire Yosef, by the way, in case you don't know me. I mentor entrepreneurs and passionate world changers to get them making an even bigger difference in the world by clearing out those secrets 3 a.m. fears that can keep us stuck in self-doubt, dreaming big but playing small. And I want to talk to you today about some really important insights that were shared by a wonderful, wonderful woman called Amy Schmittauer. You might not have heard of Amy. She's got a website called SavvySexySocial.com and her hashtag is vlog like a boss. Now, I wasn't actually familiar with her work. She's very big in the States and I'm sure lots of people watching this now have actually heard of her. So I'm sorry, Amy, you were new to me. I've been video blogging, vlogging since 2008 when Travis Greenlee, my mentor back then, kicked me up the backside and got me over my fear of camera lenses. But I still learned stuff from Amy. I'm gonna be sharing with you today what I learned from Amy, what I think, I, well, what I wish I'd known back in 2008, and some of the ways you can use video to overcome that difficulty of connecting via the internet, yeah? To make a deeper connection with your clients, your dream customers, your audience, to really enjoy it and to express who you really are. So if you've got any questions as I'm going through, please let me know by the comments. After the live stream, this video is gonna be on my website. I'll share the link in the description. There's gonna be some extra resources there for you that you don't wanna miss, including a free training I do on how to get over your terror of being in front of a video camera. And we're also gonna continue the discussion in my private Facebook group, Dare to Dream Bigger, the link's in the description. So Amy, she knows her stuff. Yeah, she really is. When you say someone's the real deal, you can mean it lightly, but actually she is. I was really impressed. I really enjoyed her presentation. She gave with generosity and she was truly authentic. So her big thing on vlogging like a boss is her intention is to become someone's favorite, okay? So we all sit there saying, I'm gonna vlog, I'm gonna video blog, I'm gonna live stream because I have to, because some guru told me I should, because it's what everybody else is doing. No, think about who's watching. If your intention at the start of a video blog, whether it's pre-recorded, whether it's live, is to get that one viewer feeling like you made it just for them, then it's been a success. So that was her first core piece of advice. And it's a piece of advice I regularly give clients and students as well. If you're freezing in front of a camera, remember it's not about you, it's about who's watching. So right now, when I'm live, this is for you. It's not for me, I know this stuff. Now, <laughs> you will do in a few minutes. This is for you. Make someone feel special and you will become their favorite. That is what will get them telling their friends. That is what will get them sharing. So, so many of us make our videos for many. And her view, and I'm totally with Amy on this, is aim for that one person. Think of the one person you're gonna connect with and help in that video. Solve their one problem, add value to their life, entertain them, inspire them, engage them. Make it about one person. Now this is also a technique I used a few years ago, the first time I did a national radio interview. When I was running the EU VAD Action campaign with Juliet McKenna, we needed to get a piece of EU tax law changed. I'm allergic to accounting. <laughs> I married my accountant. And I needed to go head to head with the man that was then the boss of the UK Tax Authority on Radio 4, you and yours, lunchtime, live, over a million listeners. It was me, <clears throat> a very big microphone, and a broom cupboard <laughs> at the local radio station. And to say I was nervous was an understatement. In that interview, I managed to hold my own. We managed to change the initial course of the campaign to get the government to pay attention. And in fact, the, the EU's just been voting on the law this week. It looks like it's gonna come into the law, not as quickly as we want, but it's, you know, we succeeded. What I did in that moment, knowing my mum was listening, which was scarier than the other 999,999 people, I focused on the one person. 
that got me completely over my fear of speaking live in front of a million people. You can do it too. So Amy's got some data for us, is that video is currently one third of all online activity and half of all views are on mobile devices and that is growing year by year. So if you're not using video in your business, you are missing out. The other one she really talks about is sustainability. Is It's easy to kind of blitz and burn. It's easy for us to get in there and we might video blog every week for a couple of months and then it's like, nah, and we stop. To become someone's favorite, you need to be like their favorite TV show. You need to show up week after week after week at the same time. Consistency, get them relying on you. And she talked about the three kinds of content that she creates. One is hub content. That's her everyday stuff. That's She might be talking about things in the news to do with her video blog. She might be looking at how to motivate people to do videos. The other type she does is called help where she takes FAQs from her website, from things that she's seen in social media, stuff in her Facebook page, and she answers people's questions. She gives them solutions. The other one, only about 10% of her videos, she calls them hero videos, where she really dives in and makes a difference. And those are the ones that she's gonna really want to keep, that people are gonna come back to time after time. So it's really important when you're gonna video blog to think, what kind of content is this? Am I helping somebody out? Am I newsjacking? You know, am I doing this because I want to get an important message out there? Maybe having a rant. Am I going to be having this as a piece of hero content that I want people coming back to time after time for years? Think about what kind of content you're creating before you create it. So she says, have a clear purpose for your video. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Where is your dream viewer in relationship to you via that video? Are they struggling with a problem? Are they just bored and hanging around Facebook? Are they looking for inspiration? Really think about where they are and where you want to get them to by the end of that piece of video content, and you'll give them something worth watching and shareable. So consistency, that was the real thing, is show up. Promise when you're gonna show up, keep that promise. Chris Ducker on some of his coaching sessions on the Upreneur Summit, he talked about the importance, for example, of having a channel. Yeah, like say you've got a YouTube channel, make sure everybody knows, maybe Wednesday at 9 a.m., that's when your new video of the week comes out, so that people start to expect it. Get in your dream audience's rhythm. So how will I find the time? This is one of the biggest barriers, she says, people come across when they're doing video work. Well, the industry standard on YouTube is once a week. And if you look at how long it takes to create a piece of video, maybe it's a piece of hero content, that needs crafting, it needs planning, it's probably gonna get edited, it might have sound. You might wanna commission that out. If you're doing it yourself, I know from experience, a 10 minute video, when I do my five minute biz podcast episodes, they can take two hours to do a five to 10 minute piece of video because I want them to be great. I might get a transcript done. That kind of stuff you can plan in. And Amy Schmidt, our biggest advice is batch. Okay, Chris Ducker talked to us a lot about content planning and some of the other speakers did too. We all know it is don't do your video every week unless you're doing a live stream like this for stuff that's pre-recorded, batch it. Have a day a month. Find somebody to do the editing for you. And then the time excuse disappears. So I'd love to hear from you via the comments. How is video working for you in your business? Are you diving in and making the most of it? Are you sitting on the sidelines watching to see whether it's something that might be useful? Are you secretly running a mile and telling yourself you're too busy? Or here's one of my favorite excuses. My hair doesn't look good enough to go on video today. <laughs> I use it so often. <laughs> there you go. You didn't know that one. <laughs> but what are your video excuses? I'd love to hear from you via the comments on this, either live now or via the Dare to Dream Bigger Facebook group or on my website if you're watching it there. So other stuff. She does hers, she does, Amy Schmittauer does her, her vlogs in batches. She gets tech support, she commissions out the editing, because frankly, it's not her zone of genius, and she can be using her time for something much more useful. 
And she creates a channel, consistent, showing up when people are looking to find her, to see her. So she says the other thing that's really important to notice is what's the culture of where you want to post, okay? To really grab people's attention. This was a great tip. If you're on YouTube, to get somebody to click. You know, YouTube's the second biggest search engine in the world, I think. To get someone to click to watch your video, all you've got is a thumbnail and a title. So for YouTube, that thumbnail, that featured image on your video needs to be really compelling and needs to show people what that video is about and entice them to click and spend the time to watch it. Whereas on Facebook, it's, it just shows up in the Facebook news feed, you know, the description needs to be enticing. On something like this live, I'm gonna have no say over which facial expression Facebook chooses for my screenshot. And it is now set to autoplay for most people using Facebook. So it's very different how people are finding your video. And therefore it's important to look at how you're gonna market it, how you're gonna help people see it and go, yep, this is for me, I'm gonna watch it. So for Facebook, it needs a really compelling first five seconds. For YouTube, it needs a really compelling call to action in the description, in the title, and a really good image. Now this one, the next point Amy Schmittauer made for us at the Upreneur Summit is such a gem. It's so important and it's so easy to forget. Okay. Your message is more important than your technology. So I so often hear people saying, oh, I'd love to go live, but I don't have a good enough camera. I don't have a good enough microphone. Your message is more important than your camera. If you're connecting with that one person from the heart and you've got a video with something you've got to say that could make a positive difference in their life, you owe it to them to get that message out there. Most of the time we use our tech as an excuse not to have to go visible, because frankly, going visible is scary. Ask anybody who's ever been featured in the Daily Mail online section <laughs> on their website how it feels to have troll comments. And it's no wonder it's so scary these days to put your head above the parapet and get your message out there. Have you ever felt scared? Have you ever been nervous about sharing that deeper message? So Amy's advice is think about the message, not the tech. And also don't see the lens of the camera as what you're speaking to. Imagine you're face to face, eye to eye with that one person you want to connect with as you look at the camera and they will feel that connection. I know for myself, when I'm doing live masterclasses and I might be staring at the lens on my Mac for an hour, <laughs> teaching and training a group of a few hundred people from around the world, it's really hard to train that way compared to face to face where you can see reactions, where you can gauge the energy of an audience, where you know what resonated, where you can feel where they need a bit more. So what I do is I just really think about the one person and I imagine I'm looking into their eyes. They're a cyclops, yeah? <laughs> a tiny little hole in, my, in the screen on my mat. I imagine I'm look, talking to that one person just like I did in the Radio 4 radio interview. And when you do that, it's so much easier to keep focus on the message you're giving, the value you're adding, rather than your own fears or how on earth am I gonna keep this going or are they understanding this? It gets you out of your own way. So that I think was the most important message Amy shared for me. I'd love to know from you which of those tips have resonated with you. Where are you on your video blogging journey? And on the replay for this over on my personal website, on my business website, I have got a free course for you if the thought of getting in front of a camera and doing live streaming absolutely tear, tears you apart and you don't wanna be doing it. It's a course about how to get started on Periscope, but actually the techniques in it apply wherever you're video blogging, whether you're on your phone doing something pre-recorded, doing something live, whether you're Facebook live streaming, it's how to avoid the most common mistakes, how to psych yourself up so you don't have to psych yourself up, how to get grounded, how to decide what to talk about, how to handle comments and interruptions. It's there waiting for you. The link will be in the description for this video. 
And if you're already on my page watching this video, please scroll down and get that course. It's yours as my gift. And no, it doesn't have a nasty funnel and upsell at the end of it. It's just there to help. And if you've already got my latest book, Dare to Dream Bigger, the inside work handbook for entrepreneurs and passionate world changers, if video blogging isn't something you've tried yet because you're nervous or it's something you've tried and maybe aren't making the most of because there's something in here that needs clearing out, the steps you need that will really help you in here are, <clears throat> what's your big message? Page 64, if you've got the Kindle version, search for what's your big message. The whole of step two on clearing out your blocks for your inner confidence. And then in step four, I'm taking inspired action. Step four is all about connection. And the section on connecting with your dream audience from page 220 will really help you with ideas for how to get visible. So those three sections can make a big difference to you. And I'd love to hear from you how you're using that stuff. If you don't have Dare to Dream Bigger yet, you can order it from your local bookstore in the UK. You can get it from the big bookshop in the sky. <laughs> you know, change your life and the world for less than the price of a pizza. I hope it's a no-brainer. And what are your questions about video blogging? How might it help you grow your business and how might you have been getting in the way of connecting with your dream audience through videos? And here's a hint. I can't video blog because, come up with seven answers to that and you'll find those are your fears, your excuses and your limiting beliefs. Let me know what they are over at the Dare to Dream Bigger Facebook group and we'll get cracking on dealing with them. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please share it. And I will be back tomorrow when I will be sharing more from the Youpreneur Summit. And tomorrow's topic, I loved this one. Colin Gray, and it was all about the CEO mindset that can 10 times the speed at which you grow your business. So make sure you're back same time tomorrow. And I can't wait to share this one with you. Thank you so much for watching this today.